Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, module 9, lesson 5, indirect measurement. After this lesson, you need to be able to use properties of similar triangles to solve indirect measurement problems. Let's learn. Indirect measurement. Indirect measurement allows you to use the properties of similar polygons to find distances or lengths that are difficult to measure directly. One type of indirect measurement is shadow reckoning. Two objects in their shadows form two sides of a right triangle. So if here we have our height and the shadow of the basketball hoop. We have the person's height and their shadow. In shadow problems, we can assume the angles formed by the sun rays. So the sun somewhere way up here, you know, millions of miles away. They hit the object at the same angle. And since two corresponding angles show similar triangles. We already know that this is a right one. The sun's angle here and here must be the same. These two triangles will be similar. And if they're similar, we can use the measurements of one, so we could figure out the kid's height and the kid's shadow, to figure out the height of the basketball hoop, or an even taller object. Example one, use indirect measurement. This scout statue of the Korean War in Washington, D.C. casts a 43.5 inch shadow. At the same time, a nearby tourist casts a 32 inch shadow. So here's our shadow, and here's our shadow. If the tourist is 64 inches tall, how tall is the statue? So here's where we can use what we know and things that are easy to measure to figure out something that might not be quite so easy to measure. So to solve this, let's set up a proportion comparing what we know. So in our first ratio, we can do the tourist height to the statue's height, so 64 to h, since that's what we want to know, compared to the length of our shadows. So the tourist was on top, so 32 on top, the statue's on the bottom, 43.5. If we compare these two things, how can I figure out what the height is? I can see that the tourist shadow we would multiply that by 2 to get their height. So if I multiply the statue's shadow by 2, it must be 87. So the statue's height is 87 inches tall, which is just over 7 feet tall. So this one wouldn't be necessarily too difficult to take a tape measure to, but maybe this statue is blocked off where they can't measure without climbing on it, or it's too tall for the person to reach. So using the shadows, we can figure out the height with indirect measurement. Check your understanding. How tall is the tree? Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have found that the tree is 3.3 meters. To figure this out, I'm going to set this ratio up differently. I'm going to compare the dog to the dog and the tree to the tree. So 0.45 is the height of the dog. So I'll put height on top. We want to know the height of the tree. There's our height. Our shadow of our dog is 0 0.3, so our shadow of our tree must be 2.2. This time I'm going to compare going up. I see 3 going to 45, so I must have multiplied by 15, 3 to get to 45. But this time I need two decimal places, so I must have had to multiply by 1.5. 2.2 times 1.5, so 22 times 15. If I did 22 times 10, I'd get 220. 22 times 5, I would get 110, so that would be together 330, but I have two decimal places, so 3.3, which is our height of our tree. So I just found the ratio of the height to the shadow for each. My height must be 3.3. Example 2, use indirect measurement. In the figure, triangle DBA is similar to triangle ECA. Find the distance D across the lake. Here's another example where it would be really difficult to use the methods we're familiar with to find a distance across a lake. But if we use similar triangles, we can use indirect measurement. So here I have my sight line from one side of the lake. Here I have my sight line to the other side of the lake. I want to know how far that is. Somewhere down the line, I can measure between my two sight lines. When I do that, it forms two triangles. So the first triangle the site width was 40, and to get to that point, I would have had to go 320 meters down that line. Comparing it to my overall, I would have had to go that far, 
to get my sight line across the lake. So I have two similar triangles that I can figure out the lengths and set up a ratio for. Now let's write a proportion to find our missing measure. So AB is 320 compared to AC is a combination of those two things. So I need to add 320 plus 162. My ratio would be 320 to 482. That whole distance needs to be taken into account, which is why we separated the triangles. We don't want to get confused thinking that we just use the 162 when all of this together was that side. Now for BD, the height was 40 and we want to know the distance. To find our missing measure here, we could say we're multiplying by 8 going this way, or I can see 320 divided by 8 is 40. So if we do 482 divided by 8, we end up with 60.25. So the distance across the lake is 60.25 meters. Again, that would have been a little bit difficult to measure using any of the traditional methods that we have learned. So indirect measurement would be a good way to get us a good estimate of our overall distance. Check your understanding. Find the distance across the ravine. So this distance over here. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said it is 198 meters. Let's see how to get this. Our two triangles are already separate. So 220 is corresponding to 400. We'll set that up as an equal ratio. 360 was paired with the 400. So make sure it's on the same pairing as 400. And I want to know how far the ravine is. At first glance, I don't see any quick ways to go from 220 to 400 or 360 to 400 or 400 to 220 or 400 to 360 for that matter. So I'm going to cross multiply and find my equal ratio that way. So 220 times 360 is going to be equal to x times 400. If I divide by 400 to get x by itself, I can use this to figure out. So I'm going to quick simplify. So divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10. 22 times 36 divided by 4. 36 can divide by 4, I get 9. So 9 times 22 is 198. So all I did was multiply this out. If you don't like canceling and dividing stuff by 10, 220 times 360 divided by 400 still gives you 198. So 198 meters was the distance across my ravine here. As we conclude this unit, take some time to pause and reflect. How can you use similarity to solve real world problems? Include an example in your explanation. Can you think of anything else other than the few examples that we just saw? Pause the video now and write down your thoughts.